Ooh, sounds good. Does sound good. Goes quick. She's fast. <laughs> it's the Lexus RCF, but it's not just any RCF. Yes. It's the Fuji edition. Mm -hmm. One of 60. That's it. Yep. I'm really glad that Lexus decided to build this car. I am. Are you? Interesting. Okay. I'm going to name all the cool words that car enthusiasts love. Okay. BBS, ultra light wheels. Yes. Brembo, carbon ceramic brakes. Uh huh. Carbon fiber, roof, hood, front splitter, rockers, rear diffuser, big wing on the back, uh -huh. titanium exhaust, <laughs> adaptive variable suspension. Yes. All the tasty goodies and a naturally aspirated V8. Uh huh, which is great news. All this should mean it's spectacular. It should. It should. This is a very interesting oddball car. <laughs> okay, good. 60 were made for 2021. They're going to yep. make 50 for 2022, now available in a weird blue. The more I drove this, the more I came to this thought. Okay. Because it drives much better than it should. Now, okay. I have other thoughts. Okay. I have right. other thoughts, right. but it drives much better than it well, it's should. it's got the recipe. It's got yes. all those words, the buzzwords. Yes, words. it does. This feels like, you remember the old Volvo wagons that were really good race cars? Oh, yeah, the 850Rs. This feels yeah, yeah, like yeah. somebody went to a really accomplished race team, <laughs> handed them a checkbook and a brick, and they said, we can make that go fast. You're right. And they have. They've made You're it right. go fast and feel quick. I'm just at a loss for why it exists and who it's for. I don't understand why it exists either. Great cars, great roads, and all the reasons we love to drive. TV, web, and podcast. This is Everyday Driver. The car fast. Oh, it's fa it's fantastic. Zero to sixty in four seconds. Yes. Powerful. Four hundred seventy-two horsepower. This thing moves. It's fast. Look at this. This is a heavy car mm -hmm. for being a lightweight track focus car because this isn't the car you just drive around in. This isn't the Lexus you do canyon carving and straight driving. That is not this car. That's not no. what it looks like and it's not what it's intended for. And it doesn't, It's named after a speedway. Yes, and a it racetrack. doesn't have the ride that suggests, you know what you should do? You should just drive this like a Lexus. It doesn't have that ride. Even an eco ride, it is far too stiff for every other Lexus out there. Yes. So then you crank it up to sporty eco. plus mode and it is very stiff, which is wonderful. It feels like the race team showed up and made it awesome. Absolutely. Yes. But I am so confused by this car because this feels like a huge victory to me as far as you took an RCF and you made this and that's amazing. But it's $100,000. Yeah. And it's limited edition. And then while reading the press information, I came across a concerning reality. When you buy one of these, mm -hmm. you get a watch. You saw that, did you? And when I saw that, I suddenly realized who I think it's for. Oh, okay. I think it's for the person who is a Lexus super fan who believes if they buy this and get the watch and never drive it in 20 years, oh, they will no. take it across the auction block and hope that their $100,000 appreciated more than it did if they put it in their stock portfolio. This is not a car to be driven, and I'm sad about that because it's a naturally aspirated V8, and it is worthwhile to drive, but the flip side is, at $100,000, you're into just Lexus superfan mode. And I'm going to compare this to two cars that I think are also in that mode. Okay. The BMW M2 CS. It's a great car, okay. but I don't think you buy the M2 CS okay. unless you are a BMW superfan. Right. And the Mustang GT500, also $100,000. I don't think you buy that car unless you are a Mustang super fan. This is the Lexus equivalent of those cars. You're not bringing people to the brand because of the RCF Fuji Edition. You're bringing the Lexus super fan who goes, oh, that's going to be a collector's item, and it comes with a watch. I think you're absolutely right. Those two are excellent. There's nothing wrong with that no. if you sell cars. Sure. Right? And you only have 60 to, to your sell. audience? Yes. I mean, Porsche kind of does that. Yeah. There's a lot of car companies that kind of do that, mm -hmm. and they know where the sweet spot is. Ferrari kind of does that. <laughs> yes, they do. If you want to do, do extra, just bring even more money. Mm -hmm. But you're absolutely right. This is the car for the fans. Yes. The car for our core customers. Uh -huh. The problem started when I saw that it did come with a watch because I thought, a watch. It's going to be an expensive, really great timepiece. It's a micro brand. It's MSTR watches. 
Fortunately, it's powered by a Japanese movement. It's okay. an NH35 Seiko movement. So it is a Japanese movement. So it's a Japanese watch, all right? But the most expensive version that I found was about 400 bucks. Okay? okay. Yeah. At $100,000, and you can get a $400 watch. Why don't we get a $50,000 watch and an M2 competition? Or mm. better yet, a $10,000 watch and a $90,000 Cayman? Or no watch at all? And go spend your money. <laughs> if you have $100,000, your options are almost endless. Mm -hmm. New or used, you can get a lot of performance and a lot lighter car. Well, I'll, that's the issue. That, I agree with that. And the other thing about it is you walked past the Corvette C8, the 911, and Lexus's own, I think, excellent LC500, and you bought this. I, I like but this. But you got a watch. You yeah, got a cool watch. And you got a one of 60. Those are the things that sold it. But as a sports sedan that wants to be usable in mm -hmm. 2 plus 2 form, mm -hmm. that wants to be track ready, oh, you need more for your 100 grand. Speaking of track ready, if you take this, this to the track and you show up and all the local track rats come out to see who brought what, mm -hmm. They will be impressed because the rear rotors are the exact same size as the front rotors. I, <laughs> yes. I don't think I've ever seen that, actually. It's crazy, yeah. That's astounding. They're carbon ceramic. On the other hand, they need a lot of heat to get the car to stop like the first bite of regular old iron rotors. Mm. A lot of heat. And then they're pretty good. So they're really not good for street use. They're better for track. But if you're tracking the car, do you want to go through a, I don't know, eight, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 set of... Brembo carbon ceramics, so maybe the car sits. But if you take it to the track, the, everybody's going to ask how much it weighs because you can have the air conditioner on your favorite song, and yes, you you won't hear much while you're on yes. track, and it'll be a lovely experience, and you'll be going blindingly fast. But you know how Lexus insulates you from the driving experience mm -hmm. with this car and the weight they have now insulated you from a track experience. Oh, you don't get to feel anything on track, which is where you should be feeling an angry, mm -hmm. spicy, interesting car and every dynamic therein. But there's too much weight here. Well, and here's the thing. If you want to stay with things that are similar weight, we can talk about things like the Camaro and the Mustang and those kind of things that are okay. very powerful okay. and are similar in weight. However, you spent half as much. Uh, and if, if you, and you spent you spent half as much yeah? and you got all of the growly, snorty feel, but you didn't get a Lexus interior. But if you want a Lexus interior, get a Lexus that's not set up for the track. It's, oh, my brain hurts. But you because, can't let this car sit. You have to go drive it because of all the goodies on here. But you're going to let it sit because it's one of 60 and you got to watch and you're waiting for your portfolio to grow in, in value. You, you, are people going to buy this in the future? Just because of all the goodies, the list of carbon fiber and titanium and carbon ceramic and the lightweight wheels. and it's, this is, Are they going to buy it? I don't know that they should. But this is the problem that's happening right now with well, auction cars is that because it's one like of so many word. and because it is this special version, then it suddenly gets value. Whether it should or not is a totally different conversation, but it's those limited edition ones that get value. And I think that is exactly what this is targeted for. It's targeted for its future value. And you're right, the super fans. While being a, a solid, interesting, this is a, oh, this is a victory for whoever sat down and said, let's make the most track-capable RCF possible. Bravo. You did true, it. True, true. But it's, it's that answer to a question no one asked. All the track enthusiasts are going to say, why didn't you buy a Miata? Why didn't you sell this and buy a Porsche? Why didn't you get a Corvette or a Mustang or anything yes. lightweight? Or how about a GR86 or anything from the Toyota portfolio? How about a Supra? Lighter, less mm. expensive, yeah, that's very good. track capable. Yeah, that's if you're good. thinking about tracking a car and it's got a giant wing and all the track goodies, why not just buy a Supra? On the good side, this looks very angry and it looks the business. And it is the, the front, business. The front three quarter panel, somebody at Lexus was looking at a, at a Honda Civic Type R and went, we should do that. <laughs> and then they looked at the wing on the Honda Civic Type R and went, we should do that we too. We can do that better. You ready to drive? I think so. All these carbon bits makes it look like a race car. It's yes. very aggressive, as you said. Yes. It looks really angry and fast. And it is really angry and fast. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a true F car. And you can figure that out by the blue band around mm. the F logo. If you open the hood, you will see the intake manifold is also painted blue. Kind of interesting. Kind of yep. cool. Agreed. Everything continues on the interior. 
you get red F spec seats. You get red door panels. Every little piece of Alcantara they could figure out, that's all red. All the places they could put it, yes. And the carpets are red. So you could quite literally say the carpets match the drapes in this car. You could. And (laughs) it's got red uh, weave of the carbon fiber. And I do have to say, some of the best seats I've been in in a while. These seats are excellent. They're so good. They're brilliant. Lexus people are carbon fiber experts. The hood is excellent. Mm -hmm. All these carbon fiber bits. It's just a wonderland of things that enthusiasts respond to. Except for the weight. Good news, in 20 years, not only will this interface be really, really outdated, it'll be kind of charming. (laughs) It'll be like, you remember this? It it will be like us comparing 80s video games going, how cute, the the OG, that's kind of cool. I want to play with this. That's awesome. All right. When you punch it, 417 horsepower, 395 pound-feet of torque, this thing moves and it sounds spectacular. And Lexus is up there with building some of the best-sounding, most powerful V8s on the planet. And they're one of the last ones, Lexus of all people, to be doing a naturally aspirated V8 that is superb. They're one of the last ones to do that and offer it in a passenger car. That is weird that Lexus is what... If you'd made a list 10 years ago, who were the companies that would do that? (laughs) Lexus wouldn't have been on it. Lexus? But Lexus is hanging on. And here, another... Back to your thing about all the stuff enthusiasts love. Mm -hmm. They took out the torque vectoring rear diff of the lesser RC. Right. And they put in a good old-fashioned torsion, which I yep. can confirm, I don't know why, it drifts wonderfully. <laughs> great power, great differential. This will drift with wonderful control. You there got we go. Yep. Now we're cooking with gas. See? Yeah, that eight that speed is great. mostly good, and every now and then is not quite good enough. <laughs> it's still a struggle for Lexus to cater to their buyers, Uh to the people who love what Lexus does, and that's insulate you from the driving experience, and then try to build a race car on on top of that, which is, it's a conundrum. It's a paradox. (laughs) It doesn't know what it wants to be. It's race car on the outside and underneath, and then it's still gotta be a Lexus on the inside. Because if they built this car very raw on the inside and very minimalistic and Spartan, Mm. wouldn't be a Lexus. True. But on the exterior, with all the specs and the carbon fiber uh-huh. amazingness and the lightweight wheels and the huge brakes, well, then it also wouldn't be a Lexus either. So it's fighting itself constantly. Yes. Yes. So therefore, the only solution is to park it and walk away. Buy it and park it. I guess. Sell and, it when mm. people go, oh, how cool, because that recipe, naturally aspirated V8, uh-huh. how long will those be around in the future? How long will Lexus build those? The watch probably comes in a case that fits nicely in the interior, and you can just have it here under lights. No, it goes on your wrist. That's well, right. no, no, not you if, not if it it's in your wrist, wrist, but the whole thing sits. When you're turning into corners in this car, I'm not sure if it's a, a trickery of alignment or if it's actually the steering rack, but this turns in very hard, it very does. initially it sharp, does. and you yes. think, wow, this is, this is fantastic. But when the adaptive variable suspension is all the way on, Sport Plus, and it's in its mode, even though the car catches you, you still feel a lot of weight behind that. Of course. So it starts to, over small undulations, to really get thrown around, meaning it's only good for smooth tracks. On roads Mm. like this, you start to go really fast. The car is just, it's controlling its weight, but there's weight behind it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a lightweight kind of feel over a bump. It it never hides its weight. behind it. It never hides its weight. And that's the thing, Camaros and Mustangs often hide their weight, and they weigh close to 4,000 pounds. And and we we get in them, and we think, this is big, and then we see the weight's back, and we go, I didn't think it was that big. Because they, they've made it feel that way. They've this taken never feel stops out of feeling like a large car, like a large luxury car, yeah. which is why I'm, I'm so impressed with how track ready it feels, but it's like starting with the wrong recipe and then yes. making it work. Yes, so I'm conflicted because I love that Lexus is doing this. Yes. Half the company is thumbing their nose at the future and saying, naturally aspirated V8. Uh-huh. But then the Lexus product planners have to get involved and say, well, we've got to sell it and it's got to drive and feel like a Lexus which adds weight and complexity, and therefore cruising along like this in Sport Plus, I, the car feels so ready to go, and we have to go the speed limit. Mm-hmm. When you're going triple digit speeds, not sure how I know this, it's so insulative, it's so distant, mm-hmm. it hides its speed too. Yeah. It's good at hiding the road, but it's good at hiding its speed too. There we go, and the sound. 
great. Sounds great. But at that kind of speed, it's just a number. And have you noticed on yeah. the instrument panel, it doesn't have the cool LFA slidey thing that's on nope. almost every other Lexus? They've it's walked away from it. It's fixed. Yep. Yep. Of any car that should have the cool features, it's this one. You're right. <laughs> You're this right. This car. I, why? I, I feel like Lexus why? is on the cusp of something. Absolutely and this is another one of those are. cars that feels that way. I, I almost feel like Lexus is where Mercedes was in the early 2000s where we kept driving their cars and wishing they were a little different than they were, and then there was this renaissance to follow. Lexus has been telling us they have a Lexus driving signature, a driving fun they're trying to put into their cars, and they're trying to, like, back engineer it, reverse engineer it into their current lineup, and it's not quite working. And you feel You feel the difficulty, you feel the struggle there, and that's evident in this car, which makes me wonder about the next gen of all of these, including this. Yes. I... I'm ready for that next gen, but here this car is still for sale. Yes. And you can still yes. buy them. As a limited edition, put it away, we think, maybe. But I want to take it to the track, but I don't because if but, I'm going to be on track, it's not going to be in this car. And everybody at the track will laugh you off the track because you're driving such a heavy car. What? $100,000 is the big question mark here for me because at $100,000, you walked by a lot of great cars. It opens up to buy this. 50% of the market. And every and fun car. I, I have to think you are at that point a person that wants the really cool track ready Lexus and not anything else. Otherwise you would have bought something else at hundred grand. Well then are you saying Lexus has now built the bragging rights car without you ever having to go on track? They've tested it for you, given you the numbers mm-hmm. and just here it is. I don't have to do anything. I can just park it at the car show and just say yeah. This is the coolest Lexus made. This is the one that goes the fastest. This is the limited edition one. I have one. You don't. I'm the ultimate Lexus fan. And we're kind of done. 